Okay, so continuing from last tutorial, so we've created our functions, but we now have nothing inside our functions. So now let's put something in our inside our functions. Uh, so we've created some variables inside player.h, but we haven't created any variables for animation. So for the animation in the private section, we're gonna be creating a sprite called uh, let's just name it sprite image I guess and uh, we're gonna have the current frame X current frame Y and it's gonna have the X and Y positions just like the player and the frame counter and the switch frame that's not actually supposed to be in player dot H sorry that's supposed to be in animation dot h yes so sorry for that but it's supposed to be in there this only has a position in the current frame and also for the player we want to set a uh, move speed so let's name this float move speed now you might want to make x and y in such a float also to accommodate with SFML since mostly everything SFML takes floating point values. So let us look at animation as well. So you might want to change the float. And let's keep these things integers and integers. So if we go to animation uh the initialize, we need to initialize a few things. First, we need to set our frame counter equal to zero. And our switch frame, what our frame counter and switch frame is gonna do, our frame counter is gonna count until it reaches our switch frame value. When it reaches our switch frame value, then it's actually going to switch frames and then transfer to the next image. So just like I showed you in our first tutorial, um when when we had our source x and our source y once it reaches, once the frame counter reaches switch frame, our source x is going to add to our frame width, and uh, that is going to cycle through the images. So let me see if I can find the image file again. It is in here, sorry. YouTube SFML tutorial, so player. Just got to wait for it. Okay. I'm uploading the next video to YouTube, so it's kind of making the computer slow. Anyways, so what this is going to do is that if frame counter, if current frame x is equal to zero, um, current frame x in, in this tutorial is the same as source x in the tutorial number nine. We just changed the name. So current frame x, if current frame x is equal to zero, right, then if frame counter is greater than or equal to switch frame, then we want to set current frame all the way to here so we'll draw this image then draw, make it draw this image then this image and then s swing back to over here now the reason why we have um, frame counter count up to switch frame is because one we want it to actually update the player animation at a uniform rate but also we don't want um, th like when we do that uniform rate then the players legs don't move at an unbelievable speed they move at a moderate speed which you set at and when you set that speed the the walking animation won't seem so fast and it will seem more realistic so we're gonna figure out how to do this hopefully by the end of this tutorial so we set the frame counter and the switch frame so some things we're gonna have to take in the parameters is the int x and the int y and we need to store the amount of frames so we need to make another integer called amount of frames x and amount of frames y. So basically it's just letting us know how much frames we have in each direction. So we have four images going to the right so that's four frames and we have four images going vertically so that's four. So the frames is four amount of frames x is equal to 4 amount of frames y is equal to 4 so if we go to animation dot cbp we need to get the x the y we need to get the frames the amount of frames x and 
frame Y. And so we're going to be putting this at this X is equal to X, this Y is equal to Y, uh, this amount of frames X is equal to frame X, and we don't need to use this for amount of frames X and Y, but I'm doing it anyways, equal to frame Y. So we initialize the values that we need. Now we're going to be getting certain, um, pro we're going to need some certain property, property functions. And what these are going to do is that is going to give us certain information that we need. So I'm going to put this in protected right now. Uh, it could go in private or if you wanted to do in public. But we're only going to be using these within the class. So right here we're going to be doing frame width. And we're going to do in frame height. So what these are going to do is going to return. Uh, these are going to be get methods. And they're going to get. We should put get to let them know what the get methods. So we're getting the frame width and the frame height. And what is the frame width and frame height? The frame width is, as I explained in tutorial 9, the width of each individual image. And the frame height is the length or how long the individual image is. So each image is 32 pixels by 48 pixels. But how are we going to figure that out? Because spreadsheets can be different, all different sizes, right? So we need to find a way to universally um, figure out how wide each individual frame is. Because if we don't do that, um, then the animation class won't be very flexible. So this is how we're going to do it. So in our get method, we're going to do void, no sorry, it's integer, int animation and it's get frame width and what we're going to do is go, we're going to return a uh, sprite image now the problem is that we have to do get image so I believe it's get image dot width so is it get width yes it's get get width divided by amount of frames x and we're going to do the same thing for uh, get frame height and I'm going to explain this after don't worry so get frame height so we're going to do return sprite image dot get image dot get width get height sorry divided by amount of frames y so what what is this doing right here? So first of all, we can only get the actual width of the image from getting the actual uh, from SF image. Okay, so the sprite the sprite class itself, the SF sprite class can actually indeed get the width and height that's stored in the actual image. And we're gonna be converting the image into this sprite right here, our player image into the sprite. So um, what we're doing is that we're going to get the full image width and we're going to be doing the dividing it by how much frames. So the, the width of this image is 128 pixels. So 128 divided by 4 is equal to 32 as I explained in tutorial 9. And that's why this is going to return 32 for the frame width. For the frame height, the height of the image is 192. 192 divided by 4 um, amount of frames y which is equal to 4 is going to return 48 so our frame width is 32 our frame height is uh, 48 so what we're going to do also for our initialize we need to actually get the image so we're going to put s of image and we're going to put temp image and then we're going to put that this sprite image dot set image is equal to temp image and wow what happened there temp image so that basically we're gonna do it we're gonna set the player image to this image 
Now, why do I do it this way when I put the player image and I drag it and drop there? Well, basically, it's for flexibility again. If I have an enemy class and I have many different enemies and stuff, I can individually pass in the enemy uh, image and then the animation class will do whatever it needs to do with it. Now, uh, one thing that you're s you might be asking is that the animation class only works with a single image and a single image only. You might be asking how come it doesn't accommodate for multiple images. Like say you have an enemy class uh, and you have multiple enemies. How come the enemy class, how come the animation class only works with one image and one image alone? Well the reason for this is that you can make an array or a vector of the class animation to store multiple images. So that that's just a different twist of doing things. Instead of in an animation class doing like sprite image 10 to store 10 different images, we can store one image but we can make an array, an animation array that could store 10 different images or 10 different values. So depending on the type of the class, we can determine the anim the animation or the image size depending on how much images we needed. So if we had four different players, um, sooner or later we're going to be actually including an instance of our animation class in here. But say I have our, I'm creating an instance of the animation class. I could do animation animates and that will create one instance of it but if I want to say I have four different players I want to make four different player animations I can make an animation array and then that will store a different value just like a regular array so the first so an animate zero I could accommodate for drawing the sprite sheet for player one animate one will be the sprite sheet for player two etc etc so that's just a different twist on doing things but that is for uh, later tutorials so anyways that's it for this tutorial hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and bye